Three words to describe Tommy. Uh, sarcastic, opinionated, talented. And those are all compliments. Sick as fuck. That's three words, sick as fuck. We originally saw Tommy in this, the kind of like street events, which were, you know, cars, chopped up quarter pipes, curb. Memory. Memories of you. Memories I flush. Memories at the thought of you. When I think of all the time. I think it was like right when he got on Powell or something. Like we didn't, I didn't know him, we didn't really know him. But you know, obviously he was well known in San Francisco. We knew who he was and stuff. He was like one of the first older dudes that was cool to me. You know how little kids like, they don't know what's going on, but they try to piece things together and then they like share their info like they know something. So one of my friends was like, yeah, and he's pro for street. And we were just like, what? What is that? We'd always try to figure out from Future Primitive, was that his real house, that little little doorway that he skated into, we'd always, we'd always be on a mission to try to find it. My brother got to ride his board. I was never al allowed to ride Tommy's board, or have a Tommy Guerrero board, because Greg said I wasn't allowed to have the same kind of board as him. I never got to have a Tommy board. That sucks, sorry Tommy. Memories of you. I showed Animal Chin to my son yesterday for the first time. And I'm like, what am I fucking wearing? Who was that kid? What the hell's he doing wearing that? I'm like, whoa, terrible. He self-entertains. That's what I like about Tommy. I really like people that self-entertain themselves. And they can, they have inside jokes and they, they just, they get a kick out of life. Um, I like that. Tommy has that. What's the plan, Stan? Yeah, Cornelia. <laughs> Tell him to do a Bunsen over to Jensen. $80,000 an hour. I mean, how many people do you know get paid that much money? Not many. But you can go to work for one, a minute a day and be stoked. Oh, you skateboard? Do you know Tony Hawk? You're like, yeah, actually, yes. And then, you know, yes, I do. And they're like, no, you don't. You're like, okay, good, I don't. Whatever, I don't fucking care. The 80s were awesome, dude. He killed it. Like, he was making some money, and if we didn't have money for, for dinner or for beers or... You know, like he hooked us up, you know? He hooked everybody up. He took care of a lot of dudes. He taught me how to drink beer. Thanks, Tommy. It was this mini ramp contest in Vancouver, and everyone had gone out before, the night before, and, and Tommy was looking a little, little rocky, a little hungover. And so he calls our team manager, and about 10, 15 minutes later, Todd Hastings shows up with one beer in a ice bucket, like this perfect little beer. He hands it to Tommy. Tommy chugs it at about 10 in the morning, and he goes on and, and does really well in the contest. I can't remember what he got, but he was a top 10. And I thought, wow.
sometime in the early 90s, and it was in the heart of San Francisco, and everybody was there. Tommy ended up winning, but he gave the award to Mike, which uh, was huge because it was in front of everybody. It, you know, that's the kind of guy Tommy is. Like, he knew that Mike Carroll killed it, and it was a, it was a, just a really cool thing to see him acknowledging that the future of skateboarding is here, and uh, the judges might not even know it, but the skateboarders know it. Pretty sick to have your childhood hero give you, a, you know, that trophy, the first place trophy, back to the city, trophy to his city. I always said we started real because we didn't have a choice. And I look back on it, and, I, and at that time, too, I realized I was talking for myself because Tommy had every choice in the world. He was um, Tommy Guerrero, one of the most famous skateboarders on the planet. And um, I think it was a huge thing for him to step into doing his own company. And I think that that inspired a lot of skateboarders to let him know that you can do your own thing, you can follow your heart, and you can create these companies and these things within skateboarding yourself if you put yourself to it. I just usually say I'm very thankful. You know, people will say, you're lucky. You say, you say, no, I'm not lucky, I'm fortunate. You know, lucky? Did you throw yourself into the cement 3,000 times a day? I don't think that's luck. There's no luck involved. A lot of fucking pain involved. So, I don't want to hear the lucky shit. The best thing about, for me, being a skater then, is it was totally hated, still. And that's what I loved about it. And that, you know, what I still love about it to this day is that you were the black sheep and that was the point and that's why you were a skater. Keep it in the streets, everybody wants to make all these skate parks and like, okay, you have a skate park now, like, here you go, like wrangle you and corral you in this little fucking environment. And like, no, you can't contain it. You can't contain energy like that. You're crazy. Skating was just like, fuck you to everything. I love it. We'll keep on looking until we're done And on the way we'll have some fun If we don't find him, that's okay We had a rad time anyway I said, if we don't find him, that's okay Cause we had a rad time anyway yeah.